I'm here with Dr. Stanley Krippner, and we'd like to ask him a few questions about hypnosis. Uh, the first question being, how were you first exposed to hypnosis? I was actually first exposed through reading about it. I was a very avid reader when I was a child, did a lot of reading in psychology. Eventually, I ran into articles about hypnosis, and one of the first things that I read about was how stage hypnosis was very different from how hypnosis was practiced in medicine and in psychology and in dentistry. So I had that orientation very, very early in life. Then when I did my graduate work, I actually came to the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis for workshops and received my formal training at those workshops even before I had uh, finished my PhD. I entered at the master's level and continued once I got my PhD and have been very much involved with uh, this organization and with other organizations and the field ever since. Can you tell us who some of your mentors were, or people who influenced you as you developed in hypnosis? Well, back in those days, the early 1960s, Milton Erickson was still very active, and he was certainly a seminal influence on me, and I went to many of his lectures, many of his workshops, saw many of his videotapes, many of his films, but somebody who influenced me on a more personal level, level was Herbert Spiegel, who I knew in New York and who actually is the only person who ever successfully hypnotized me. I'm very low on the suggestibility and the susceptibility scales. And it was uh, Herbert Spiegel who really pulled something off. Maybe it was because I uh, was uh, so in awe of him and his prestige. Maybe it was his basic skills or maybe it was just luck. But. Uh, I owe him that as well as his uh, mentorship and his friendship over the years. Uh, how long have you been uh, affiliated with, the, uh, with ASH and what roles have you played within the society? Well, I simply have been a member and a learner and an occasional presenter at programs with ASH. And this goes back 40 years, since the early 1960s probably since about 1960, 1961. Could you share with us your own uh, definition or understanding of hypnosis? It's in my articles and in my books. And rather than repeat myself, I'll give you sort of a condensed and similar, um, similarly succinct definition. I really see hypnosis as structured suggestion. I think that Suggestion is around us all the time. And when suggestion is structured, hopefully by a therapist or dentist or physician, to attain a mutually agreed upon goal, then we call it hypnosis. Now, of course, stage entertainment uses hypnosis. There it's not structured by a uh, healthcare professional. It's structured by an entertainer but it is structured suggestion, mainly with highly hypnotizable people who are selected from the audience, and it does attain a goal, mainly the goal of entertainment. So what that group does is certainly hypnosis, um, although I think that uh, obviously it is to some extent hazardous for the at-risk person who, uh, who gets up on the stage. Also, lay hypnotists, they practice hypnosis. They're not really mental health or health care professionals. Some of them are quite good. Some of them are mediocre. A few of them are probably harmful. But they also structure suggestion to attain or try to attain mutually agreed upon goals. Have you seen some changes in hypnosis over the years that you've been practicing? I've certainly seen a great many new applications. I have seen a deeper understanding in terms of the research that's been done. I've seen more acceptance by many, many fields. In my own line of work, I've seen it used with great frequency with trauma victims of one sort or another, as well as in sports activities, which is something uh, fairly new, something that I'm perfectly involved in. 
So I think that I've seen many, many positive developments over the years. I think that there are still some problems in terms of state licensing. In some states, it's fairly easy for lay hypnotists to be licensed, which I suppose is better than nothing. It keeps them under uh, some type of surveillance. I think that uh, I think that the research is getting better because we're identifying more and more variables that are important, and I think that the individual differences in hypnosis are becoming more apparent, and I think this is a very good sign, a very good thing. Do you have a favorite story about hypnosis that you could share with us? Oh, good heavens, I suppose I have several, but when I was reading about hypnosis back in my high school days, we were also playing a game called hypnosis, and in the game, at, 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 at parties, we would take a bowl, and I was the designated hypnotist, and I would have somebody hold the bowl while they were looking at a candle. And as they were holding the bowl, this was to help them concentrate, and the candle was to help them focus. And then, to help them concentrate even further, I would say, now move your hand under the bowl from left to right, and I would say, now you notice it's hard for you to identify and your left from your right and to distinguish between the two. This means you're probably getting hypnotized. So now do it from right to left. And so they'd be rubbing the underside of the bowl and said, now very quickly bring your left hand, uh, or, or your right hand, whichever was under the bowl, up to your face and touch your face. Now move it in a clockwise position. And ah, you see you're not sure which is clockwise, which is counterclockwise. Now in a counterclockwise position. Well, in the meantime, the people in the group were trying to keep from laughing because underneath the bowl was soot engendered by the candle flame before we got started. And so at the end of the demonstration, we said, we're now going to give you a visual hallucination. Look in this mirror and you will see that your face is covered with soot. And they looked in the mirror and it was covered with soot and they thought they were hallucinating. And of course, the people then finally were able to break out laughing. That's a wonderful story. Well, thank you for uh, taking your time to spend with us this afternoon, and uh, hopefully we can share this with others as well. It'll be my pleasure, and keep up the good work. Thank you.